IHTN Studios. It's Braves Beat. Welcome, Braves, and welcome to this week's episode. I'm Gabe Tassi. And I'm Jacob Ailis. So, Jacob, I don't know if it's just me, but I stared at the solar eclipse and my vision is still blurry. What about yours? Did you wear glasses? Anyways, we have a lot of news to cover, so let's get started. Indian Hill has been designated as one of the best schools in the country for music education by the National Association of Music Merchants. IH earned a Best Communities for Music Education Award for the ninth year running. This goes to show the amazing opportunities our students have in the arts. It's not too late to sign up for the annual Concur the Hill on Saturday, April 27th. 5K starts at 8.30 a.m. with a kid fun run following at 9.30 a.m. Click on the link in the description for more details. As you may know, Indian Hill has officially hired a new choral director for next year. Yes, Mr. Angelo Sylvester will take over the position starting in August. And Isaac had a chance to sit down with him for an interview. Isaac? So I'm Isaac Atchison, and I'm here to introduce, introduce? Uh, Angelo Sylvester. All right. So how would you like students to refer to you as? Uh, you can call me Mr. Sylvester, or any nickname is fine. Sometimes a student will call me Sly or anything else. That's, cool. That'll be fine. Uh, what is some basic information about yourself? Uh, what's your experience teaching? Uh, what college you go to? High school? Uh, hobbies? That kind of thing. Sure. Uh, so I'm from Northeast Ohio. Grew up in a little town called Louisville. Uh, it's one of those like one stoplight farm towns in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Um, but there I was always in band and choir through all my years oh, okay. in school, and I really loved them both. Um, I ultimately ended up going to Ohio University mm -hmm. in Athens, Ohio, where I did my degree in music education. Loved every second of it there. Um, really, really fell in love with singing. I started doing my degree uh, playing the tuba, and oh. I finished my degree playing tuba. Um, but I fell in love with singing in my time there, and so that really helped me want to become a choir director. Uh, what do you believe are, are the most important qualities for a choir teacher to possess, and how do you exemplify those qualities in your teaching practice? That is a good question. The most important qualities for a choir teacher to possess. Mm -hmm. um, I would say first and foremost, kindness and care. Um, making sure that everybody in the space, in the classroom that wants to make music is comfortable and happy to be there and feels a part of the family. If you aren't glad to be in that space, you're not gonna make any mm -hmm. quality music. So um, I like to get to know each of my students as an individual. Mm -hmm. Sometimes ensemble music making, you can start to feel like a number because you're a part of a crowd. And that's mm -hmm. one of the beauties of it is that, you know, there's all of these people in one space working towards a common goal, but it's not just numbers. Every student is a different person. And so getting to know all of my students individually so that they know that I love them and that I care for them mm -hmm. and that I am committed to their betterment. And then after that, we insist on musical excellence. I know you and you're important and now sing the right note. <laughs> and, and then we work from there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Do you have a message that you would like to share with your future students in the Indian Hill student body as a whole? Yeah, I would love to share something. Um, students, I assure you that no matter what you believe about yourself, you can sing. Um, the number one thing that I hear from students is, oh, choir is really cool, but I can't sing, or oh, my mom tells me I can't match pitch, or whatever it could be. Yes, you can. Every single person is born onto this planet with the ability to make quality art. There are studies that show that we sing before we speak, and if you have even this much interest in singing, you should do it, because it's an incredible experience, uh, and you are welcome in my classroom at any time. Right. Thank you very much, very much for joining me for this interview. Hope you yeah. have a good time here. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Isaac, and congratulations to Mr. Sylvester. To remind you, April is Autism Awareness Month. Currently, there's a lot of negative stigma surrounding autism. And this month focuses on getting rid of that stigma as well as providing more opportunities to people suffering from autism around the world. Nonprofits such as Autism Speaks on the Autism Society require resources and volunteers. So go check them out if you need volunteer hours. Let's send it over to Charlie and John for this week's sports report. Thanks, Gabe and Jacob. Hello, Braves, and welcome to this week's sports report. I'm John Anning. And I'm Charlie Rogers. The baseball team cruised to an easy victory over Marymount on Friday, shutting them out 9-0. to zero. Then on Saturday, in a game versus Western Brown, the Braves fell just short, losing 7-6. The Braves had their home opener on Wednesday versus Deer Park, and we'll have those scores for you next week. 
Congrats to the softball team on defeating the Marymount Warriors on opening day 17 to 7. A special shout out to Zoe Glenn on her two home run day. The boys lacrosse team took on a strong CHCA team looking for revenge from last year, but unfortunately fell short three goals. The Braves look to beat CHL rival Marymount this Friday at home, so make sure you go out and support your Braves. The girls lacrosse team took on Marymount on Tuesday, which ended in a tie. Congrats to Samantha Kane on a three-goal performance. The girls will take on a strong Mason team on Saturday. Wish them luck. The boys and girls track and field team competed this past Tuesday in the Indian Hill Relays. The boys team finished first overall, and the girls finished third overall. Way to go, track stars. That's all the sports news we have for this week. Back to you guys at the news desk. Thanks, John and Charlie. As you all know, spring and, of course, exams started this week and will continue for the next two weeks on Thursday and Friday mornings. The complete testing and bell schedule can be found on your Canvas page. For students who are not testing during the morning hours, you should follow the late start schedule and do not need to report to school until 10 on testing days. However, if you're not taking an exam and cannot get a ride to school late, you should report to school at the regular 8 a.m. start time. Yes, and if you arrive at 8 a.m. and are not taking the exam, you will go to the cafeteria for study or other school work. As a reminder, here's the special EOC schedule for the testing weeks. On Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we will have a regular seven period schedule. Thursday has testing from 8 to 10 in the morning and followed by periods 1, 3, 5, and 7. Friday has its testing from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. this morning, followed by periods 2, flex, 4, and 6. Good luck, Braves, on all of your exams. Ms. Peely and Mr. Brownie have an announcement they would like to share regarding a special contest. Roll the clip. Hello, this is Ms. Peely and my colleague, Mr. Brownie. He's a little camera shy. We have a fabulous new contest that we are going to start in the next couple of weeks where you, the students, get to guess who the faculty members are for their senior prom picture or grand picture. You can win fabulous prizes. It'll be wonderful. We have some examples to show you. So this person, what a nice looking young man. What do you think? What do you think, Mr. Browning? I, I kind of see Mr. Domadeo in that. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to agree. I see Mr. Domadeo too, very okay. professional. All right, yes. And oh my goodness, what a beautiful young woman. What do we think of her? Is that Miss Robertson from the Media it Center? It could be. Could it be. could be. Oh my gosh. This looks like it could be. What's Mr. Julius's last name? This looks like it could be him the or King? or Mr. Hill. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Now look at this guy. What a stunning looking young man. I think this could possibly be like Mr. Broxterman, Mr. Boyer. May, may, may. I don't know, I really see it. They're all so handsome. Thanks, Miss Billy. I can't wait to find out which faculty member those are. The pictures will be displayed in the front lobby from April 22nd to 30th, along with more information. Before we end, Mr. Johnson has this week's two words. What's up, Braves? Here are your two words for the week. Let go. Last week, we talked about recognizing that mistakes, they're going to be a part of our journey. But there is a difference in thinking about your mistakes because you want to grow versus thinking about your mistakes because you can't let them go. It's all about a balance. If we're honest, it's pretty easy to get stuck on the mistakes that happened weeks or months ago. And trust me, I know that the memories of those times that you failed are tough to shake. But when those memories pop up, you don't have to let those moments keep you pinned down. You can't change the past, but you can control whether or not you let those moments affect your mindset and your actions in this moment. Leaders learn how to put moments into their place. Although a mistake may be a part of your story, remember it is not the end of your story. If you find yourself unable to move forward and be the best that you can be because you're always focused on the mistakes that you've made, it might be time to talk to a trusted adult about that and seek out some additional support. Remember, leaders are always surrounded by a team of people who are there to help them grow and embrace new perspectives and possibilities. The key is you have to learn how to let go. All right, Braves, that's all the news we have for this week. Be sure to follow us on X and Instagram, subscribe to us on YouTube, and email us with any school updates. And remember, stay, stay classy, classy in Inhale. Hill. Spring break highlights. Shep, you go first. Um, I celebrated my mom's 50th birthday in Mexico. 
Was she grateful for that? She was very grateful. She loved it. Good. Jay? Well, I'd like to mention I celebrated his mom's birthday as well. Um, as far as what I did, I bunted baseballs and I went on quests with my friends. Thank you. All right, Mike, so uh, how was your spring break? Good. What was the highlight? Um, I played video games. Where at? The cave. Yeah. I'm here with Lamella Ball. Lamella, what was the highlight of your spring break? Uh, going to Hawaii. What'd you do? A ton of stuff. Hoop? Uh, I did not get the chance. Uh, highlight of spring break. Um, nights with, uh, my friends. What did you do in those nights with your friends? Um, you just walked around, played with stuff, really fun, uh, played with stuff. All right, how was your spring break? It was great. I went to Memphis, Tennessee to visit my father-in-law, and we went to a lot of parks, and we went to the, oh, like, biggest bass pro shop, apparently. There's, like, a pyramid. Oh, pyramid Have you yeah. been there? No. Yeah. Highlights of spring break. It was a great time. Shout out Max Murphy for funding all my things coming up. I was in Florida. What part? The cave. St. Bray's Beat. St. Bray's Beat. St. Bray's Beat. All right. And as you can see here is a person who has no friends just sitting all alone. And we are about to ask him, sir, highlight of your spring break. The cave.